Today on The Happy House, presented by Creative Kid Stuff. I'm with Amanda from Mama's Happy, and she's helping me solve a decorating dilemma. I'm a big fan of switching things out seasonally. I love that. My mood. So what's nice is to kind of get some things in place that then you can swap those things in and out. Okay. All right, so let's say if we started with, I've got a um, rather large frame. This is actually a window. And then I'm interviewing a self-made author. This is one of my brand new favorite kids' books. He sprinkles your eyes with magic sleep sand that falls very slow from his magic dreaming hand. When can I see him? When will he be here? Does he live far away? Does he live near? And finally, a fun and easy science activity to do with your kids. Kids get outside, they notice nature. You can do this at your house in your own backyard, or if you're, I mean, it's duct tape. You turn duct tape inside out, put it around your wrist, and then let kids walk around finding plants and flowers to stick on it. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm happy. <laughs> I learned early on things are much easier with a little help. I also have a few tricks of my own to share. It's go time, people. Welcome to the happy house presented by Creative Kid Stuff. I'm back at Mama's Happy today with one of my favorite people, Amanda. Thank you. You're so good to me. You're so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> so, Amanda, I recently moved and I have a lot of wall space. Okay. And I've got some things, but what I don't want to do is fill up my walls with just like going to a place and picking a print and picking a print. That means nothing to me also right. is going to be very expensive. Yes, please don't do that. No, so I need some ideas. Okay, All right. I have ideas and we hear this a lot. People come in the store and same thing. They, they want to fill up a wall. They want it to feel personal because when you go to a store and you're just buying the store-bought prints, it really right. doesn't say anything about you and what's important to you or your style. Um, so it's, it's great to work some of those in and sometimes those are nice to fill big space, but then adding, adding to it. Okay. And I'm a big fan of switching things out seasonally, I love with that. my mood. So what's nice is to kind of get some things in place that then you can swap those things in and out. Okay. All right, so let's say if we started with, I've got a um, rather large frame. This is actually a window, um, which is a fun thing to do if you ever find windows that have broken panes in them. This is a great thing to do. Another thing, we just broke a huge mirror moving Th the other day. Therapeutic, also therapeutic, right? Therapeutic. Like break one them. pane is yeah. broken, just break the whole. Break the whole, take all your oh. frustrations out, <laughs> yes. So. Okay. Think about old um, window frames, um, mirror frames, broken mirror, save the frame. Okay, so in this particular one, we, we stapled chicken wire. On the back, and that we looks easy back. enough. I That's super staple easy. Staple gun. Yep. Chicken wire, we can get that any, like hardware store, yes. big box hardware store yes. also. Yep, very inexpensive. And what's nice about the chicken wire is then you can clip your things onto that. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody loves the look of chicken wire and the, that country look. So if you don't, um, it's easy to just still find things that you can actually just attach straight to the wall in the middle of the frame mm -hmm. and you don't need the chicken wire. Okay. So, so don't, you know, if you're not a fan of the country living look, yeah. right, um, don't be afraid. I like how though this, so this is super functional to me because this yes. one has these clips on the bottom. So in my mind, this is great for a big kitchen wall because I can attach notes for my kids. I actually have four children, so I Perfect. could be like, hey, here's your chore list. Yes. <laughs> yes, right? Or like, I maybe sometimes I would say, I love you, mm -hmm. and here's your chore list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can put all kinds of different things, invites to like grad parties mm -hmm. or around holiday time, putting all the holiday cards on something like this. Super cute. So I think this is a really great kitchen piece. Kitchen piece. I would agree with that. All right. Okay. So now let's talk, maybe it's a little bit more formal room. So here is, now this was a gorgeous frame on a not so gorgeous piece of artwork. Okay. Okay. And well, so. What was that? Do you know? That? Was it like a picture of like a pheasant or something? It, it was a, it was. Uh, a pas pastoral scene? A pastoral scene. <laughs> it was a portrait. Oh. Okay. Of a unknown woman. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. On here, you could do something super simple. We, we, we've all seen this with the wreath, right? And then... I really love this, though, because if this is just open... And this is a little bit big for this particular, for this particular wreath, one. but just changing it out, like you said, for the holidays, and if you had a specific um, Christmas thing or a fall thing, you could just really... Keep this that could be seasonal, and yes. Not take this down, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then some other fun things would be, um, you know, maybe it's your family's, you know, your last name, the letter from your last name could go on there. 
Um, some other fun ones would be even just taking a vase or a pitcher. And with this, you could do the same concept as the wreath mm -hmm. as, you know, hanging and then it hangs up behind here and uh -huh. then you change all the flowers that are in that. So okay. that could be something where that's a, that's a really fun. great idea. Um, it could be something fun and kitschy, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. And again, let's say you, you want to do your pop of color with this. So your frames are neutral, mm -hmm. your wall is neutral, and then maybe you find three things in the same, you know, fun kind of color palette or yellow. in the same theme. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then have your, your frames holding those things. I love that. Okay. So this, this is a big, this is a lot of real estate, which I love because as I said, it's expensive to take on a whole wall. Yeah. So you've got this these big pieces of real estate, and right. then what do we do around okay, it? Okay, so then you're gonna, you know, surround those with smaller, maybe even some different shapes, ovals, mm -hmm. rounds, and then again, you could do, <laughs> how fun is this? So it's all set to hang. <laughs> Your little bulldog, so cute. <laughs> okay. That is adorable, that would be so cute. Maybe it's the number of people in your family. That's really cute. Um, it, could be a, it could be a photo, Yeah. Um, so there's, all different ways to use. I mean, this at a garage sale with an ugly print in it would be under ten dollars. Yeah. Right. A little chalk paint, which and, we love. Which we love. Uh -huh. And you've got a wall. I love it. Uh, these are such great ideas, and I love how you can change it up. I love how it can be personal, and honestly, something like this. What I think people, when they move or when they change spaces, make the mistake of doing is trying to fill it up right away because it feels blank to them. Yes. But maybe this just hangs. For a while, mm -hmm. and I don't know. Yeah. And then I fill it in when something. That's feels exactly right. To me. right. And yeah. maybe you start with just this on your wall, yeah. and then as you find things, you add yeah. add in. So it yeah. doesn't need to be done all at once. That's no. a great point. So <gasps> this is awesome. I think I'm on my way. I'm actually going to buy this today <laughs> for real. <laughs> okay, I can ring so, you up. Can you ring yes, me up? I all right. Can. Thank you so much, Amanda. It's <laughs> always you. so fun to be here. Thanks for coming out. self-made author. I'm at a local toy store with a former employee who started like just loving kids, loving working with toys, and became an author for kids, which is so incredible. I want to hear more about your story. Timmy Bliss, author of In Search of the Sandman, how did this all come to be? Well, um, the story actually was one that I made up and would tell my daughter at bedtime. As most parents know, um, kids don't like to go to sleep. So Correct. I, Correct. Yeah, <laughs> I would make up the story to kind of coax her and lull her um, off to bedtime. In Search of the Sandman, it's nighttime, bedtime, sleepy time for all. And it was, it, it was ironic that at the time, I walked into Half Price Books, they were having a writing contest for bedtime stories. And I figured I could just write down the story that I tell my daughter, set it to rhyme, give it a little more meat because there was a word count minimum. And it was a semi-finalist. Wow. Um, I was kind of shocked, kind of impressed. Um, no aspirations to become an author. But when I became a grandma about a year and a half ago is when I decided to actually illustrate the book myself um, and publish it. But Charlie won't come when she hears mommy call. Charlie! Charlie, it's time to put all your toys away and come to bed to end the day. Idea for book, writing of book. So daughter, granddaughter, how long was that in sort of marinating? I mean... 20 years. 20 years. That's so incredible. And then I mean, I think that's really interesting because you hear about that with actors, authors, comedians, like they, a thing will come to them and then it, it may, it just maybe needs to sit there for a while. Well, yeah, I mean, during that 20 year span, I was, you know, drawing characters, getting feedback from children as to does this image appeal to you more or does this one, um, dibble dabbling, um, talking the talk, but it was time to walk the walk once my, <laughs> once my grandbaby was born. Yeah. 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 
but I'm not sleepy and I'm not ready for bed. Mommy replies, Charlie, did you hear what I said? And what I think is interesting also is typically um, rhyme is not something I'm a fan of, but this book, the rhyme is so gentle, but it, it is perfect. It's very soothing and it's a great bedtime book because it's just long enough and just short enough. And it addresses some of the, not even fears, but just sort of the anxiety about going to bed for kids, mm -hmm. which I think is really important. They don't want to say goodbye to the day. Yeah. And one of the things that was top of mind with illustrating the book was, you know, bright colors um, that would appeal to kids to hold their interest, a lot of detail for kids to search and look and discover. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of a book of discovery, mm -hmm. discovering all the things that come along at the night. Night after night, it goes the same way. Charlie won't go to sleep. Charlie just wants to play. Back to when my kids were really small. I think I must have read Goodnight Moon about 250 times over my lifetime, but they want that repetitive. And this could be one of those books, honestly. It's I really hope great. it becomes an instant classic. Yeah. <laughs> the lights go out, the blankets pulled high. Charlie still asks, why, Mommy, why? The Sandman comes when the stars shine bright. He puts you to sleep in the glowing moonlight. So I know this book was 20 years in the making, as we just discussed. Have you always been an artist? Has this always been, have you had this creative like flair to you? Always. There's, oh. I was born with a creative gene. Um, it's innate in me. Um, the, my, my day job, I'm a grant writer. So I love the written word. I love wordsmithing. Um, I love forming um, a vision. Um, you know, as a grant writer, it's You need important. to be very creative as a grant writer. Absolutely. You have to be able to tell a compelling story right. in a finite amount of space. Um, so that's part of my background. Um, as far as the graphic design goes, on the job opportunities to explore um, communications and development work, producing newsletters, annual reports, and taking classes here and there, community ed classes, learning on my own Adobe Illustrator. Mm -hmm and basically just getting into the program and figuring things out. Yes. Yeah. He sprinkles your eyes with magic sleep sand that falls very slow from his magic dreaming hand. When can I see him? When will he be here? Does he live far away? Does he live near? So I have two additional questions. One, and then I know this is a very big question, but how does somebody get a book published? Like just in a short, bite if you can talk because I know a lot of people have ideas about that. Oh sure. CreateSpace.com. Is that oh. short enough? Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> <Just> yeah. <laughs> no, it's an it's an online um self publishing website. It's um a division of Amazon and it's very user friendly. It walks you through each step that you need to oh. take. Um from uploading the cover to the interior it's, it's very user-friendly, and it's so, probably the, the main resource that self-publishing authors go to. And I think that's really great because you might be self-published at first and then not be self-published. Like, you have, to, you have to take your own leap, and then it might become something bigger. Right? Yeah, yeah, that would always be the hope. Yeah. Maybe. My final question is, in a quick, like, glimpse, what is the plot of the book? The book is about a little girl named Charlie, named after my granddaughter, who doesn't want to go to sleep um, until her mom tells her that in order to do that, you know, you in order to see the Sandman, you need to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And she's like, who's the Sandman? And mom's like, well, let's get you tucked in and we'll talk about it. And she talks about all the things that come along with the night, mm -hmm. you know, the sound of the wind and crickets and fireflies. And as Charlie is listening to this story, she's being lulled to sleep. Mm -hmm. I won't give away the ending. You know, whether or not she actually does see the Sandman, you'll have to read that. All right. To find out. I can't wait to hear about it. Timmy, how do we find this book? Because now that I've read it and heard it, I love it. How can we get it? Well, for folks that are local to the Twin Cities area, you can walk into any Creative Kids Stuff location and pick it up. You can also get it from Creative Kids Stuff's website, which is creativekidsstuff.com. It's also available at amazon.com. Okay. Mm hmm that's great. So very accessible. Yeah. And, you know, I have a website, timmybliss.com. T-I-M-I-B-L-I-S-S dot com. Yep, that's right. And there's always a link to where you can purchase it there. Perfect. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. 
See, it worked. They all fell asleep. Coming up next, a great way to get your kids outside and looking up close at nature. Liz and girls, we went on a little nature walk, didn't we? Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Liz, you have a brilliant idea for us um, and our nature walk. Tell, tell me about how you came up with this and just, just about this fun project. Okay, so first of all, this is not my idea. It's all over the internet. I don't know who came up with it, but I love it so much because it's a great way to get kids outside. that comfortable? Okay. So, so there's yours. Yep. And I'm going to turn it this way. There you go. Okay. Just like this? Yep. And then watch. You can actually, oh my duct tape is going to stick itself. You can actually kind of like overlap it and make pretty designs. Okay. Last time I made this it was so pretty I just wore it all day. <laughs> Do you guys like going outside? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to get kids outside and get them exploring their environment. So and whether... noticing things. When we were on our yes. little walk, it's you, we were noticing, here's a clover. Here's, um, so, I mean, just noticing all the different plants. Right, and apparently people are really bad at plant, like tree identification even. I've read stories about yes. that. Um, so. Kids get outside, they notice nature. You can do this at your house in your own backyard, or if you're, I mean, it's duct tape. You turn duct tape inside out, put it around your wrist, and then let kids walk around finding plants and flowers to stick on it. I think that's a trillium. So we're not gonna pick that. It's, it's like the state flower. It has this pretty white flower that comes up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Do you want one? Oh, these are pretty. Look at these. But you can do it um, if you're on a vacation, you can do it in a park. So it's a great take along science project. So what did you guys think of it? What did you find when you were out there? Um, well, Flowers? first I found different kinds of leaves, like clovers and oak leaves and helicopters. And then we went and found more things closer to we found actually pretty flowers. So how do you think you could identify these? If you wanted to find out what kind of leaf that was, how do you think you could identify it? Um, you could look in a book maybe, right? Go to the library and look in a book about plants. You could go online. There actually are some cool apps out there. There's one called Leaf Snap where you can just take a picture of a leaf and the app will um, identify what it is. What? So yeah, so there are lots of great online resources, mm -hmm. but kids can go do part of this outside and then bring it inside and learn more about what they collected too. This was a really fun project. And you could actually go, are you gonna go out on the town tonight with that bracelet? Cause it certainly is beautiful. Mm, okay. Probably. Okay. It really is pretty. <laughs> what, what would be the coolest thing you could find to put on your bracelet? If you could find anything in the world, what would it be? A magnificent unknown thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the best answer ever. <laughs>
So basically, I know you already said this, but a strip of duct tape, inside out, wrap it around your wrist, collect things outside, and bam. And bam. We're accessorized. Yep. What's the best thing you found to put on your nature bracelet? What's your favorite thing on there? What is it? Tell us what it is. The weave. What color is it? Pink and green. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty one. So Liz, you have these two really great books that people can find. Um, how, how do they find them actually? Anywhere books are sold. I know Creative Kids Stuff carries them. Okay. And they're full of lots of great ideas Thank you. for parents and kids and just make science easy. Yep, and it's family science. Yes. Make it a family project. So fun. Thank you. Are we closing with a song? We're closing with a song. Are you guys ready? I think you know what to do. Physics. Physics. Biology. Biology. Chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Physics. Physics. Biology. Biology. Chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah. yeah. High five. Thank you guys are awesome. Thanks for helping me do science today. Thank you. And happy. Lots of fun. Okay, okay. Okay. Modeling, modeling. Okay. okay.